Shalom Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I keep, can I help but just watch as things are changing when it comes to Russia uh, and that of NATO. Just steadily, the tensions are increasing there. It almost seems inevitable or might say imminent that the two, NATO and Russia, may end up in a conflict in the near future. Uh, this article came out today on Sputnik News there. It says Trump puts pro-Russian agenda on hold as concession to the American elites. Uh, the article states in here, they talk about how that President Donald Trump has come under a lot of pressure from those inside his own administration uh, to deal with Russia more firmly, even including uh, his Vice President Mike Pence, that of Mr. Tillerson, uh, the, the Secretary, uh, uh, Secretary of the Nation there, as well as the Defense Minister uh, for the United States as well. All of these men here looking, and, and of course Congress being very strong and the Senate very strong for a stronger stance with Russia, for the United States to take a, a stronger uh, uh, position with NATO, and of course a tougher position when it comes to Russia. So those things are materializing. Uh, President Trump once desired to try to work with Russia seems to be fading quick. And of course we can see this, and it's not just RT and Russian news that is reporting this, over 100 NATO military vehicles arrive in Estonia as part of the biggest deployment since the Cold War, March 23, uh, 2017. You can see again tanks this time all of them colored in green no more of the uh, brown camouflage and of course all the military equipment steadily uh, building up in the united states going to ports being shipped out of the country it's almost like the united states is being stripped of all of its military and being sent over to europe and uh, other places as well that of south korea even and japan uh, so is there anything left defending the homeland? Are we just really making America become a sitting duck in this case? You can't help but wonder what the agenda for all this is. But uh, definitely they seem to feel that Russia is some type of a threat to Europe. And the biggest threat I can see that's in the uh, horizon will be in September when Russia holds the Zapad 2017 drills in Belarus. But according to the article here, uh, that is being put out uh, by Sputnik there, they are stating that there's only going to be 3,000 Russian troops and 280, 280 pieces of hardware and up to 25 Russian aircraft involved in this drill. Uh, I don't think that's really the case from some of the early shipments of uh, train cars that we had reported here on Israeli News Live uh, back in, I believe it was February, there were a huge number of military equipments being transported into Belarus from Russia. So I have a feeling that these uh, numbers are very reserved. And as we reported the other day, after seeing this issue about a dirty bomb in Ukraine, you cannot help but wonder if Russia is not also trying to do like, like the United States is doing, justifying intervention in North Korea because of nuclear arms and also seeing a, a clear uh, threat of using a nuclear device on the Donbass region by the uh, uh, Kiev's uh, De Secretary of Defense there, it has definitely got Russia a little bit nervous about that happening so close to their own border, not to mention the, the citizens of eastern Ukraine. So a lot of issues, a lot of tensions are building there. Also, the former Russian uh, lawmaker was shot dead in central Kiev. Uh, from what some uh, writers are saying, he was a defector, and of course Russian news is saying that Kiev is only going to play one scenario of this, and that is that he was shot and killed by Russian authorities. It uh, says here, there was an exchange of fire in front of the entrance to the Prime, uh, Premier Palace Hotel about 40 minutes ago. One man was killed and two other persons were injured. The identity of the killed man has been established. He is a Russian pol a politician, a former State Duma member. Yes, I can confirm that he is Denis uh, Voronikov, uh, the head of Kiev police, Andrei uh, Kershkinov said, as cited by TASS. Uh, the article also states in here, that he was a former member of the Russian Communist Party, immigrated from Russia to Ukraine in October of 2016. He received Ukrainian citizenship in December, having given up his status as a Russian citizen. He was highly critical of the Russian authorities. Uh, this is one reason why they believe that he was actually uh, targeted by the Russian government. 
anyway, that going on there. And also, uh, just to show you some other things here, this is uh, just sharing some, so we did a, a Russian response to NATO. I really wanted to kind of see, you know, what would you get if you tweet this uh, or put this in your Twitter search engine there? And everything is on NATO side. Estonia Embassy, US, good discussion among friends on NATO response to Russia. Um, but I was trying to find something where Russia would be responding to the NATO buildup. And Russia does have small buildups here and there, but nothing compared to what the NATO alliance is building up. Uh, the first British troops arrived in Estonia as part of a NATO response to Russian aggression. Uh, the next step in NATO's response to Russia's annexation of Crimea is to bolster allied maritime presence. Uh, Russian armed Syria with Eichlander missiles in response to NATO stationing uh, Patriot missiles defense system in Turkey. Uh, so we see a little bit, but not much. Russian response, no need to create anything new. Existing tools that should be used, but are blocked by NATO. That was a quote by, um, uh, or actually Maria Zakharova that said, stated that. Um, and so it's, not, it's like Russia is not really doing a whole lot to counter that. But I did run across this one here I wanted to share with you guys. I thought it was very interesting. This was uh, the Four Horsemen on Twitter tweeted this out. Would this be a good response to Russia's interference in Western elections and international disinformation campaign? Thoughts? NATO. Uh, so definitely doesn't seem that they're pro-Russia by no means. NATO's most senior British officer has claimed that alleged Russian cyber attacks could be deemed an act of war and trigger the military alliance principle of collective defense. General uh, General Sir Adrian Bradshaw, the Deputy Supreme Allied Commander of Europe, said allegations of interference in U.S. and European elections and international disinformation campaign could cause the definition of an attack to be widened. It's almost like NATO is really bent on finding an excuse to invade Russia. Uh, very sad to see. I hate to see that a sovereign nation just go under attack. I want to share this with you as well. Uh, this came from Dr. Rosa, sent this to us uh, important, from Important News. Scientists warned that the incoming California megaquake could plunge portions of the state into the ocean. Uh, there are actually scientists for the first time have really begun to change their tune about the possibility that a megaquake could send parts of Southern California beneath the sea, something that I've believed myself for a long time would be uh, the case eventually somewhere down the road that some megaquake could actually sink uh, the, the, the parts of the California coast there. Uh, hundreds of British troops and tanks and heavy armor are sent to Russia's border and the biggest show of force against Moscow since the Cold War. That was another article. I meant to have that up closer with the other ones there, but I didn't put that in there. Uh, another news that just came out that was breaking, and that is the, uh, Vladimir Putin has now banned Jehovah's Witnesses inside of Russia. Uh, I can't say that I agree with the doctrine of Jehovah's Witnesses, but we've known there's been a, a string of... Uh, executive orders that he's been placing out that has been uh, severely curtailing all different types of religions inside of his country uh, that are not part of the Russian Orthodox uh, religions there. So freedom of religion is being suppressed there. Uh, I do know that the, there is a, a lot of cases in Russia pending. The courts are being bogged down there, uh, very much like that of the Catholic Church of pedophilia cases and other type cases inside the Russian government is one reason I think why they're citing the, the banning of the religion there, but it also brings up concern uh, to us that uh, the freedom of religion is something that is becoming more and more of the past in Russia. It's kind of interesting, they pick on these religions here, but what about Islam and all the Sharia laws that they have there? You don't see Russia picking on them, and that's kind of interesting. In fact, I think that Vladimir Putin not long ago actually was allowing uh, one of the type laws there, a beating of your wife. That's very sad if that's actually true. I don't know that for a fact, but I did hear that this was something that he had passed recently concerning to us uh, as well as I would, I'm sure it'd be concerning to anyone. Anywhere they would allow Sharia law would be a crime against humanity. Uh, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We will be headed out to Israel here before too long. 
Uh, so do keep us in your prayers there as we uh, journey towards Israel there. And thank you for those of you that have been helping us to make this trip possible. We thank you and thank you for your continued support. You can uh, contribute either at our website, israelinewslive.org, or even on our channel. Go to our main channel there, Israeli News Live here on YouTube, and right above the uh, subscribe button, there is a place you can help contribute there as well. Thank you, and thank you for watching. Sure.